So we back with another NBA 2K23 video. Today we're gonna be giving you guys the best badges. I've been going crazy for y'all boys lately. So all I ask is that y'all show the support by liking, subscribing, comment down below to help the album, all that good stuff. But if you guys do want the fast way to get 99, if y'all do want that crazy build, I'm gonna give y'all very, very soon. I also gotta give y'all the best badge set up for all builds, whether you're six for four and under, whether it's six for five to six for nine, six for ten and up. All that will be in one video. If you guys want the best animations for six for five to six nine, if you guys want the best animations for six for ten and up, just like the video, show the support, and that's all I ask. But yeah, today we're going to be giving you guys pretty much the best badges in the game. And we're going to be going in ABC order. Last year was a lot more badges. I think this year is around 64, 65. If there is any badge I left off, I have to take the screenshots of these and put this into a tier list myself. So just comment that down below and I'll tell you guys how I feel about that badge. But I did my best to get every badge in the tier list. So when it comes to the tiers, how these are going to work broken is something that is broken, needs to be patched or very overpowered. Some things can just be very overpowered and doesn't need to be patched. Some things can just be just need to be patched. Then top tier is pretty much a badge that you should have on for sure. Usable is something I can see is good and I can see people using it. Not enough badge points does not mean it's bad. It just means that you just don't have enough badges to put it on. And then we have don't use. So yeah, let's hop into it. So when it comes to the first badge, ankle or not ankle breaker, but acrobat. Acrobat, in my opinion, is one of the more underrated badges this year. Not only does it usually be in a really low tier, but also it has some one thing from very from um fancy footwear that was very very good and it's pretty much just gonna allow you to get around your defenders a lot easier when you do an acrobatic lift but it also does still help you make more acrobatic shots so i would go with usable for it or top tier but for now we're gonna keep it at usable aerial wizard this is pretty much like the new lob city finisher mixed in with put back boss there's a lot of new badges this year and there's a lot of old badges that a lot of things have been added to these old badges and there's a lot of new badges that have combined older badge and this is one of those badges and i think for big man this is a hundred percent a top tier badge even for some non big man you can say this is a top tier badge agent threes the meta right now is doing fake threes right now i think as people start to learn more and more people start to learn how to quick stop and stuff like that agent threes will probably move down but broken it right now because it's either overpowered or it might even might need to be patched because a lot of people are not even just doing fades now they're doing spin jumpers it's just too good of a badge now um i don't know if it needs to be patched i think it probably is just overpowered um so yeah that's where i'm gonna put it now we're going to add another tier. Now, I didn't say this to start the video, but I actually recorded this entire thing and none of this re pretty much recorded. So I had to redo this entire tier list of like 65 badges again. So if you haven't already left a like, what are you doing? But yeah, we're going to add a need tier because there's just some badges, in my opinion, that aren't top tier and you just need it. So I'm going to throw amped in need because... For guards, you need that badge. It's gonna be a badge and negate the stamina issue. Um, stamina issue for this year for guards. I don't really feel like that stamina issue is really any for anybody else. Like lockdowns, it nerfs like how many steals you can or steals and blocks, but you still can get blocks. You still can get steals without those three adrenaline boosts. As a guard, you're not speed boosting without that. And even when you can, it slows down your jump shot a lot. So Amped, in my opinion, is of the utmost importance for guards. Anchor, now I know a lot of people are having issues with the shot contest on NBA 2K23, but me personally, I think people gotta understand, the way these badges work, you're not gonna be able to get away with something being bronze or silver. You're gonna really wanna get that badge to the highest tier possible. Now, you're not gonna be able to get every badge Hall of Fame. Like Anchor, you need a 99. In, uh, I think it's block to be able to get this Hall of Fame. But let me tell you right now, Anchor is really good. Not only is it for a shot contest, but it also gets you a lot more blocks. I've seen a lot of people also saying you don't get nearly as many blocks. Do not try to go on these badges and put them to the lowest tier and be like, this stuff trash. Do not go on in the game and act like there's no pain contest because you have no badges. These are just things that you got to understand. You can't just try to be cheap on stuff. And still think it's gonna work to the maximum capability it's just not how things are gonna work it's just that simple so anchor in my opinion is definitely a top tier badge though ankle braces this is the badge pretty much to stop yourself from getting take your ankles now i'm gonna be honest 
I haven't seen nearly as big of an ankle breaker issue as they was acting like it was going to be. I guess because people are putting up their defense. But even guards that really don't even have defense. They don't even really get rocked like that. Now, when it comes to one badge, I can see the point of it. Because you take ankles every single time. But it's not like an ankle breaker ankle breaker. It's like a tight handles ankle breaker. Which we're going to get into. But yeah, ankle braces, I would say is usable. Because I do think as more and more people do use that badge, it will be necessary. But for right now, I can see it as certain locks. Only certain locks would even have it on. Ankle breaker. Again, like I was just saying, I haven't seen too many crazy actual ankle breakers. Like, now I haven't seen too many people using that shot creator takeover as well. So that might could be it. Now, if you put this ankle breaker badge with that shot creator takeover, then we talking. If you took this badge with another badge that get ankles, now we might be talking. But just this badge alone, I would say is just usable. But if you pair it up with other things, I can see you saying top tier. Next is Back Down Punisher for bigs. I think Back Down Punisher works really well this year. Um, a lot of people aren't going 99 strength even on their big men. And I feel like if you have really high strength with Back Down Punisher, it is very good. Like even if you're a slasher and you like don't even have post control, it's still very good. So yeah, I'm going to say Back Down Punisher is top tier. Next is Bailout. Bailout. It's another badge that people are saying is not as good as last year. And it's not at bronze. But when it comes to getting to the max capabilities with these badges, you're not going to really find too many best bang for your bucks. The way best bang for your buck badge is going to work this year, what's going to be the best badge you can get for like the regular tier one where it's not going to be an additional just to put it at bronze. Like it's not going to cost three badges to put bronze or five badges to put bronze. You're going to need to find you the best tier one badges if you're trying to find the best bang for your buck. Bailout for majority of people are gonna be tier two. So off that alone, we're gonna throw that in top tier still. But do not think that these badges are gonna be like how they was, where you just throw them at bronze and they still gonna be fine. You're gonna have to throw these up there if you wanna get the max potential of these badges. You're not gonna be able to do that like that no more. Now it's still gonna be good bronze, it's just not gonna be nowhere near as good as it used to be. Blinders. Now, when it comes to these shot contest badges. Bro, I'm not going to lie, I said all this in the last time. But yeah, when it comes to these shot contest badges, like Blinders, Deadeye, yeah, it might not take that much of a dip. It might not make that much of a difference when it comes to the shot contest. But the way I feel from my experience, how it works, pretty much when people get these contests on you, yeah, it might be the same number. But the way Mike Wang said the contests work this year, when you get contested, that jump shot that you're shooting becomes faster. So... From my experience of using blinders, dead eye, the way that these things work is, yeah, your jump shot becomes faster, but when your jump shot becomes faster, if you don't notice, your green window gets smaller. That's why if you play with somebody with a meter and they get a little bit of a contest, their meter will bounce off that bounce like fast. It's not like you can hold it all the way in easily it's gonna bounce fast because it's a lot sharper of a green window the way blinders and dead out it will stretch that green window where you can actually green those contests at a way higher percentage of a time so maybe you know how maybe it's not gonna take the shot contest off but it's gonna be pretty much like you're shooting with no contest if that makes sense it's gonna be negating that the contest if that makes sense hope that makes sense so yeah i would say blinders is either top tier or usable i think right now is usable because blinders i don't know if it's as good as the other two badge contests but for guards for sure is really 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 still important in my opinion but due to the fact that i feel like it's really only guards that's gonna be able to put it and even then like guards you got like you gotta do this agent threes limitless range and that i like out of all the guards you're probably gonna put that as your last badge anyway so i would just say it's usable i could see people using it because it actually does have its usefulness but my people not gonna have enough badge points so i could throw it in badge points because it's most likely tier three so i'll do that box out beast this in my opinion is one of the better bang for your butt now for bigs it's gonna most likely be one of the higher tier but you do need 10 badger grades before you get to the actual good good badges for the big man they kind of did the big man defensive kind of like how they did the guards finishing so yeah um backside beast is gonna be good but if you are a build that don't have really no rebound and you want to help your big man on boards like your big man not the craziest rebounder you need to help them with the box outs box out beast is a good badge so i can see it as usable 
break starter in my opinion for bigs i feel like bigs this year are gonna need it because a lot of people are struggling to shoot on this game if you guys really want to help your people get easier buckets throw on break starter it's literally that simple so yeah i would say break starter is definitely one if not a top tier a need it's either one of these i say it's a need for big men in my opinion but some play styles you don't even really need break starter so i don't know like all guards need amp 5v5 bigs, I feel, need break starter. But everybody not playing 5v5. I'm going to just throw in the top tier because it is very important for bigs, in my opinion. Brick wall. Brick wall is a top tier badge. We all know how much it does now. It drains energy. It sets the best screens. And it helps you not get back down in the post. Very, very good badge, though. We just talking about what its main purpose always was, was to set screens. Brick wall is one of the best it's been in a while is really really good and with the nerf to like the speed boosting they brought back brick wall to the old days where you get hit by a screen like hit you get hit hard next is bully bully i'm gonna drop a video going over this badge and clamp breaker and how broken it is combination but bully on its own is really really overrated i'm gonna be honest it's still good but if you're not, you're not going to get the max potential unless you pair it up with a certain dr driving dunk and driving layup and clamp break. I'm going to just be honest with you. So, yeah, Bully, yeah, you're going to get good animations. But depending on what you're going against, it won't even really do anything because some people just have enough strength to go against it. So, yeah. I'm going to still put it top tier, though. Then when it comes to catch and shoot, catch and shoot, in my opinion, is such a build specific. But honestly, I'm going to tell you this right now. There's some badges that are so build specific, but at the same time, you still have to green. This is not a game where helping you green is going to make that big of a difference. Only certain badges are going to really make that big of a difference where it should go top tier. So I'm going to say it's a usable badge because, yeah, for the certain playstyles that do spot up and stuff like that, I'm going to say it's usable. But if you're not greening, even with cut and shoot, what do you have it even on for, bro? Like, I'm going to be honest. It's just usable. I can see people using it because some people, it does help them green. But some people that just can't shoot, like, what is Like, come on, bro. What are we doing? Challenger. Challenger top tier badge, especially for locks. Um, it's gonna help you get the best shot contest possible and it goes hand in hand with badges like blinders when people actually start using blinders dead eye They're gonna be greening crazy in tests because yeah, it's just that simple But challenger's gonna be here to negate that so you're gonna really need challenger then so yeah Chase down artists. I've seen a lot of people saying chase downs don't aren't that frequent, bro. I seen people with 70 block rating just to get gold chase down artists get a lot of chase downs. Now, the way the blocking stuff works on this game, it literally depends on what the driving dunk is and the driving layup. So you can block layups, you can block layups. But when it comes to the driving dunk, if they have a really, really high driving dunk, it's just gonna be tougher to block them. Mike Wayne went over this. He told y'all before the game came out, it's going to just be tougher to block them. So blocking is just not broken like it was last year. It's just not. But you do get blocks. It's not like how 2K13 was or 12, whatever one it was, where you literally never got blocks. You will get blocks on this game. It's just balanced. It's just balanced. So if you're trying to put on bronze, chase down artists with no block and expecting a block, it's not happening. If you're trying to put on silver, you're going to get some. But you're not going to get them nowhere near as frequent as last year. You want to really have it at goal to really see a frequent amount of opportunities to get chased down blocks. That's all I'm going to say. I still think it's a top tier badge. Some people think it's just terrible this year. That is just not the case, bro. There's people that I know that I play with my friends. But I don't play with the sweatiest people, bro. And they are able to get chase downs. And they just play the game for fun. And we be playing. My God, I ain't even finna do it, bro. Clamp Breaker, Clamp Breaker, you pair this up with Bully, it is, Bully becomes really, really broken. I'm going to make a video going over Bully, the combination of Bully and Clamp Breaker very, very soon. And yeah, man, it's very, very game-breaking. I'm going to be honest. Those two badges, what Clamp Breaker does, it pretty much makes it easier to get to the goal because it pretty much negates a very important badges. So we're going to go over next. And Bully makes it a lot easier to get wide open shots at the goal. So uh, <laughs> Clamp Breaker makes it easier to get have opportunities to use bully so it's kind of very simple it goes hand in hand clamps obviously a top tier badge whether you're uh, going against people using clamp breaker but you just really want to play the best on ball defense put on clamps it's pretty much as simple as self-explanatory is literally called clamps claymore this is a usable badge this is the badge depending on how long you've been spotting up it's not like set shooter i thought it was gonna be like set shooter like where you caught the ball and you had to wait it's not like that no more the longer you've been spotting up the higher percent of a chance you have to green that shot so this is for all the spot ups if you don't move off the ball ever 
this is the badge for you. If you're a pick and popper, don't use this. It's just that simple. So Claymore is usable, but again, it's the same thing with catch and shoot. If you are not greening, what are you putting the badge on for? And it's literally that simple. I can't say it enough. So I can't go too crazy on it because shooting on this game, if you don't have the skill to shoot, you're not going to green. It's only really a select few that you will see a significant of how many greens you will get from just putting that badge on. It's that simple. Clutch Shooter, again, this is a usable, but I could see this one. This one is definitely better than these two. The only thing I say is this is really a park-specific badge, and you have to be in a close game. So even if you're playing park, if you're blowing out everybody, you're not using it. But if you're in the stage all day, playing comp all day, and you're in these close games, very, very good badge. Yeah, so I say Clutch Shooter is definitely a usable, cl clinging onto top tier. It's not a needed badge because you don't need it, but I can see people saying it's top tier. Comeback Kid, this is actually a very underrated badge, but it's only for if you're losing. So if you're losing, it makes a significant difference. A significant difference on how easy it is to shoot on this game. I don't know why they made this badge so good, but uh, I guess they made it for like the people that's not good at the game and you might need help to, I don't know. But honestly, this is actually a really good badge, I'm gonna be honest with you. Corner Specialist, again, if you're not greening on this game, what are you doing? It's not gonna make that big of a difference. I do think it is better than Catch and Shoot, better than Claymore. I wouldn't go as far to say it's better than Clutch Shooter. Comeback Kid, I would say it's better because it's so situational. Like you literally have to be trailing. Most of the time, people that's good on the game, this game has a skill gap. You're gonna be, be beating people that you're better than. So it's so situational. I would say Corner Special is better, but I still would only say it's usable because it is so build specific. Deadeye. Deadeye is a really, really good badge. I feel like it's kind of the same thing with blinders. Yeah, you will probably still get contested the exact same rate. But the way Deadeye is really good is because, yeah, it's going to be more builds that can just use it. Blinders, I feel like most people that will be able to use that really is guards. Now, some stretches, I guess you could if you really move off the ball. But I ain't really been seeing too many stretches that move off the ball this year. That's just me. Maybe... If you do, you can move blinders up there. You can definitely move it up there. I like it a lot. I personally would say it's a top tier badge, but even for my badge setup, I wouldn't have enough badges to use it. So that's kind of why I put it there. But Deadeye, I'm definitely going to try to use this because you kind of need it this year, especially once these locks start getting their challenger as high as possible. You're going to definitely need Deadeye. Deadeye is going to allow you to shoot a lot more greens on these contested shots, whether, whether they're lightly, wide open, or even open. It just doesn't make that green window too much different depending on the contest. So I would definitely say Deadeye is a top tier badge again this year. Dimer, Dimer is a badge that helps your teammates hit shots. This is a badge that actually pretty much helps your teammates. Now you do have to be in the half court passing your teammate the ball, but if you do want to help your teammates as much as possible, Dimer is a top tier badge in my opinion for anybody, but I personally wouldn't use it, but I definitely could see people saying it's a top tier badge because of the fact that people do need that help to hit shots this year. Dream Shake, usable badge. I don't feel like it's as good as it has been in the past, even though people have that still locked in their mind to jump at everything because the paint contest was so bad last year. You can play significantly good defense this year if you have anchor with good interior defense. Have hands up. You can play really, really good defense on this game. So I don't think Dream Shake is going to be nearly as good as it was last year because last year you had to jump. So getting people to jump with this where you could get bailed out is like another bailout badge, really. But yeah, I just say it's usable. Drop stepper, broken. Any of these post score badges like that is going to go unbroken. Um, self explanatory is literally going to give you broken drop steps. And drop steps this year are very, very good. Fast twitch. Um, for bigs, I guess you could say it's top tier, but I'm going to go fast. I'm going to go usable because. I feel like this year, depending on your driving dunk and your standing dunk, you really won't get blocked. So having a faster animation is not the craziest thing difference is going to make because you're going to make it regardless. So, and also there will probably be other badges in your tier three that you would put on before fast twitch as well. Because you're going to have bully, you're going to have rise up, and there's another badge that's really good for bigs as well in that tier three. I just can't think of it right now. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Fearless finisher. Fearless Finisher, in my opinion, is just usable. I'm going to be using it this year. Last year, I would say it's not, not enough badge points because I didn't really see a significant difference with it. I'm going to be honest. But a lot of people love it, bro. They love it, bro. They love it. Me, personally, I'm not really trying to take layups, though. Layups are very good this year, though. I will say that. Layups are really good this year. But the thing is, I already make contact layups on my build. I don't even have my layup max, and I don't even have Fearless Finisher. So I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. But I do think it's usable. I can see it being used because layups this year are really good. 
but yeah especially especially if you do on scoop layups but the thing is the thing that fearless finisher does is for contact layups bro and once people start getting their anchor and stuff like that that's gonna all go out the window now maybe then you will need fearless finisher but we will only know that when that time comes floor general Again, another badge to help people shoot, but this one is just gonna add attributes. Now, adding attributes isn't that big of a deal this year because the thresholds aren't really as exaggerated as last year. Like, last year we had the 70, the 80, the 90, the 99. We still have that, but it's not gonna be a significant difference as well in terms of shooting. Because if you can't shoot, you're not gonna be able to shoot on a 90 if you can't shoot. If you can shoot on this game, you're gonna be able to shoot on a 70 just like you can shoot on a 90. It's just a fact. You literally will be able to do it. But the thing is, if you can't, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. So, Floyd Journal, in my opinion, I could see people using it because it could help certain people. But, I don't know, bro. I personally wouldn't use it. I say it's usable. Giant Slayer, this is for the undersized guards that wanna get better, uh, less shot contest. But also, if you don't, if you feel like you've been getting a block a lot, this is a good bash to throw on because it does reduce the chances of getting blocked, whether you're undersized or not. So, this could be bigs as well. So, I would say Giant Slayer is a usable badge because it does have that ability to not get blocked as much. But this year, I'm going to be honest, a lot of people have already been complaining about people don't really get blocked in this game. So I don't really see a lot of people that have that issue. So I could see people saying don't use not enough badge points. It would be a waste of badges and stuff like that. But I'm going to put it in usable because it does have positives to it that I like. Glove, this is a broken badge. The only way people stop me right now on my 6'9 is by poking. I literally will go for 40 and miss twice. But I have all them turnovers, bro. Like, it's literally nothing I can do. They just run up to me and spam X. It's literally nothing I can do until I get unpluggable. When I get unpluggable, it's G's. It's G's. Now, one thing I say is, I've seen a lot of people complaining about unpluggable this year is bad. Now, I will say, when I throw on Hall of Fame unpluggable, I don't really get ripped. I'm going to be honest. The only thing I get is, like, passing lanes. Passing lanes are really good this year. But when it comes to getting ripped on ball, I get bump stolen. But it takes it's significantly harder for my build to get bump stolen at Hall of Fame unpluckable than gold and silver or bronze. In the past, that wouldn't be a thing. You would just get bump stolen no matter what what your unpluckable was. 2K has now made it to where it's t a lot tougher for your Hall of Fame unpluckable to get bump stolen, and I like that. So I would definitely say glove is broken. But I think people are kind of just tweaking on unpluckable because a lot of people didn't go with that 95 ball handle that you have to have to have Hall of Fame unpluckable. Next is Green Machine. Green Machine, in my opinion, is the best shooting badge in the game, better than Limitless Range. It's the only badge, in my opinion, that actually, actually significantly makes it easier to get greens. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that first green. It may not even be that second green, but if you keep consecutively getting greens, it's going to get easier and easier and easier. So if all you want to do is shoot greens, Green Machine is the badge for you. As soon as I put this badge on, game came significantly easier. I was going to say harder. Easier. Easily. The biggest change in the game that I've had was putting on Green Machine. I'm just going to say that. Guard up, another really good shooting badge. In my opinion, this is the one badge when it comes to dead eye blinders that actually makes a difference on shot contests in NBA 2K23. So I do believe it is top tier. I would say blinders in the grand scheme of things is going to be better long term. But when it comes to guard up, I feel like it does negate the shot contest. Now, the thing about guard up, I don't feel like you it does anything to the green window like dead eye like blinders when it comes to those shot contests. I feel like it only negates the shot contest because it depends on the hand positioning. Now, if you don't know how the shot contest works in the game, whether in the interior or the perimeter, depending on your hand positioning, you will get a lower contest, depending on the hand position. Now, guard up exaggerates that a lot when it comes to being on the perimeter. So that's kind of how that badge works. Hunters for Days, very important top tier badge for sure. Um, it's definitely a need, but it's better than a need. I feel like need is in the between top tier and usable, but you literally need it, so that's why I put it there. Now, and this for days, I would definitely say it's top tier. Um, I guess I can throw, I can, I can throw catch and shoot corner specialist up there and need for the uh, spot ups because y'all, y'all do need that probably. Maybe in McClaymore, but some, I feel like some spot ups don't really, you know what I'm saying? But. Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm gonna keep it like that. But handles for days for sure, bro. If you want, if you want to go against that stamina issue this year, handles for days. Guards, bro. 
guards you need it bro you gotta have it it makes a significant difference going from bronze to gold even so yeah i'm gonna say this right now handles for days is a top tier needed badge you need it the only thing i'll say about it it does nothing to the adrenaline boost so if you feel like it's gonna like it's less things are gonna be affected towards the general that's not a that's not a fact it's still gonna be the same thing it's just gonna literally drain your main stamina less so it's very very tough how 2k really tried to patch like guards but i don't know bro they gonna have to do something about them post scores if they're gonna go that crazy on guard they gotta do something about them post scores hyperdrive i can see it being used um especially with the hezzy i say with the new with that little hezzy spam people be doing this year i say hybrid drive is usable interceptor top tier bags passing lanes this year one of the best passing lanes we've had in a while bro since maybe like 2k19 bro the passing lanes this year you can literally jump a passing lane and there's no stop of movement you're it's all in one flow all in one go bro if you really jump a passing lane you really jump the passing lane this year bro i love the passing lanes this year and interceptor makes them even better next this is one of the most broken badges in the game killer combos i see a lot of people not putting this on their playmaking because it is a tier three badge killer combos if you don't know is quick chain but also tight handles and i i know a lot of y'all boys know how good tight handles was this year or last year Co killer combos is very overpowered and what i'm saying bro you put this with an uh, ankle breaker bro you can literally make people literally get stunned go make them go backwards make them go left make them go right make them go forward and making them go left or right can be a big deal especially when it comes to making them in terms hit a screen bro so yeah killer combos and we see i just went over how overpowered brick wall is bro screens this year are crazy so yeah killer combos is one of the most broken badges in the game even right now when not a lot of people using it but i gotta say it's broken Limitless range, that's a top tier badge right there behind Green Machine. I think those two are definitely top tier badges for sure right now. Limitless range, you can pretty much shoot from anywhere. I just walk down the court and just pull, bro. Now, people will just guard me 94 feet when I do that. So I kind of slowed down on that. I ain't gonna lie because that's that's stupid toxic because people will just double team you full court if you got it inside. But yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie. Limitless range will have you shooting from crazy distance. And people, it catches people off guard off rip because people don't really expect that if you don't have take. But I'm just crazy, and I just really like pulling like that. It's just simple. It's in me. Pause. But yeah, masher. Masher is usable. It's pretty much just a mash. It helps you make a lot crazier st stuff in the paint. If you like, I made a oversized guard. It's gonna be good for you. Like my six nine, you can use this, and it'd be really good. The only thing is, you probably can't get it like a lot any higher than bronze. But even bronze is gonna be doing the job on this badge. Menace menace uh my friend says it's really good i just don't know if i can take his word for it so i thought it usable but i just don't see how taking like a certain amount of badge points or not badge points but attribute points from people can make that bigger difference because either people are gonna make their shots or miss them either you're gonna be playing good defense on them or not so if you're playing good defense on them nine times out of ten you're not gonna be allowing them to get open threes but the only way this even works is if you're closely guarding them so i don't know bro i don't know i don't really see the point in minutes bro i never really did um but i guess now if it was like how the defensive stopper was i believe that's what the badge used to be called on like 19 18 17 days where it would literally drop people's badges you don't need to get like a double takeover to drop people's badges and stuff like that then yeah that would be definitely way higher but that badge was broken, so 2K took it out. So I understand that. Mini Magician, I can see people using it, but I would say it's not enough badge points because if you're going for uh, twos, I would just say dunk. Dunk, bro. Dunks are really good this year. Dunks are really good, especially if you do flashy dunks this year. You get, like, extra bonuses to takeovers and get again this year, like, on 21. So, yeah, I would definitely say not enough badge points on Mini Magician. But for the people that do love mid-range, I'll probably go usable for you. Cause it isn't it's never like a tier two tier three badge if you know what i'm saying mismatch expert i i'm still trying to figure this badge out because i've used this badge and i was going against a big that really played high a lot and i was able to shoot over him and i really wasn't getting contested like at all but then i took it off and another big was playing high on me and i was getting contested so i don't know if that was because of that badge was it because of that big you know what i'm saying like he just didn't have high perimeter defense on his build and the other one did i don't know it could be the build though it, it literally could be the build uh, uh, but yeah um, that's really what happened. I'm not sure if it is a badge that negates shot contest. Top tier. Easily. But if it's only good to break down big men, I can't go past usable. I can't go past usable. 
especially with the fact that it's a tier three i can't even go i can't even go usable actually because it's tier three because you're gonna throw killer combos on before it you're throwing unpluckable on for it you're throwing candles for days on for it and what's the other one that you get uh clamp breakers you're throwing all those on for it if you're if you're a slasher you're going clamp breaker handles for days and unpluckable if you're a guard you're going clamp you're going um no you're going killer combos handles for days and then maybe mismatch expert or clamp breaker that's on you but you're definitely going with those other two before that in my opinion or i am needle threader i think it's usable i think it's a good badge it just depends on your pass accuracy so if you have a really high pass accuracy it's not that important but i still would use it honestly i still i don't throw it top tier because i feel like since there aren't any other pass badges i think it definitely is top tier because um, it makes it that much, bro. The passing lanes this year are incredible this year. So you really do kind of need need a driver. So I, yeah, I'm gonna throw it top tier. I'm gonna throw it top tier. Pit Dodger, this is a need badge. I don't know if it's top tier. Hall of Fame is top tier. But every other tier besides that, nah. Nah, you're getting killed by screens. Like, even if you have gold, Pit Dodger going against bronze, brick wall, or silver, depending on that strength of that brick wall, like the strength on that build, you're getting hit. Now, if you have Hall of Fame pick dodge, it don't matter if they have Hall of Fame big, big brick wall with 99 strength. You're dodging them screens. You're slipping through screens. I'm telling you right now, it's a fact. That's why I tried to show y'all in that lockdown build video that you want those back. You want that. You want all that stuff I'm showing you guys as a lockdown. You want that 99, that 99, I'm telling you. But I will say everything besides Hall of Fame is just you, you need it at Hall of Fame. But Hall of Fame is top tier. So, yeah. Pogo Stick, I'm going to go with Pogo Stick. This year, right now, bro, I would say it's not enough badge points because if you're big, in my opinion, you're going to go with all those other badges like Anchor, Rebound Chaser, and Brick Wall. You're going with those three badges as a big before you go Pogo Stick. As a guard, I think Pogo Stick is a lot easier to get. So, the way I think this is going to work with Pogo Stick, Pogo Stick this year is going to be like how it was on 2K20. I think that resurgence of, like, people trying to make these builds that's able to do everything eventually like where everybody was making two-way slashing playmakers uh facilitating finishers playmaking glass units and they was able to they was pretty much playing like double up on those lineups they would have a, a two-way slashing playmaker with a playmaking glass unit and they both would be able to switch everything you know what i'm saying like on the twos and people would do that on the threes people gonna be doing stuff like that this year eventually with those six for seven builds those six for eight builds those six for nine builds when people start doing that in my opinion, Pogo Stick is going to go all the way to maybe even broken. Maybe even broken because it's really good at Hall of Fame this year. But yeah, right now, if we're talking about people doing that right now on those builds, it's top tier. But the thing I'll say about it, until people start doing that, I don't know if I can go higher than usable. But for bigs, I do think it's not enough bad points for bigs. But for everybody else, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, really, that's really up in the air. Post move lockdown, in my opinion, is only, I would say it's don't use because it's only useful against, like, post scores. Not even big man. Even if so, even if you have post move lockdown going against somebody with bat down punisher, that's not even the badge you want. You want brick wall. So that's not even the badge you want. They should have put that part of brick wall in post move lockdown if they wanted people to use post lockdown. But post lockdown is literally for, like, drop steps. Um, you gotta have, for drop step, post spin technicians and stuff like that. The thing about post move lockdown is, it's only good against builds that are post scores or that use those badges. So, I can't really get behind you using a badge that's only good when you go against certain builds. Because you can't predict what builds you make and those are not the most popular builds. More than likely, you're gonna play a spotter or an inside. And those insides really just be picking and rolling. Now, when you do play a post score, does it even matter because most of them are just gonna do post hooks anyway so you don't even really get to use that badge because you're gonna be going against post hooks so at that point i would just say it's a don't use regardless post playmaker for bigs this is a badge that pretty much helps your teammates hit shots off of passes whether you're in the post or off of offensive rebound if you're a glass cleaner or a rebounder um so i would say it's usable but again just like dimer it depends on how your teammates are hitting shots. But the thing is, that makes this worse than Dimer is so situation. Now, Dimer is based off passes in the half-court setting. So, you do have to be in the half-court at least. But in my opinion, I would definitely say Post Playmaker is just usable. I wouldn't go no further than that. Post Spin Technician, my opinion, is another broken badge up there with Drop Stepper. Um, it's, very, it's a post-scoring badge. It's a, it's a post-scoring badge. And 
like again, bro, post lockdown is only gonna be used in certain circumstances. So nines has it a ten, people aren't even gonna have that. So yeah, like it's really just toxic to throw those badges on. They need to be nerfed. They need to be nerfed. Posterizer. Now this could go in broken because of driving dunk. Re like the higher your driving dunk is, the harder it is to get blocked. Like you can have a 99 block, go against a 99 driving dunk, and really be tough to block those people. I'm gonna be honest with you. The only thing is, man, posterizer in my opinion takes a lot more skill this year because of the dunk meter and all the different things that comes to dunking this year when it comes to throwing a flashy one hand, a flashy two hand, rim hangs, and all that. All that, bro. I'm gonna be honest, bro. If you go against somebody just use, doing the little rim hang stuff, it's really tough to block them. I'm gonna be honest. It's really, really tough to block them, even if they do the craziest dunks. But Posterizer isn't just for content dunks. If you didn't know, it's for also dunking through traffic. So even if people are jumping at you to block you, all that good stuff, it'll really be tough. But the content dunk part does take a little bit more skill, so I'm gonna just throw in the top tier. But I can see people saying that it's broken. Pro Touch, in my opinion, is a don't use. If you don't use uh layup timing don't use this badge if you use layup timing good badge but if you using layup timing you might as well just throw it off but this year i'm gonna be honest layup timing is actually pretty good so if you do use layup timing it's usable but more than likely majority of people that play 2k don't use layup timing so i'm gonna use put it in don't use quick first step is in top tier is at the utmost importance but quick where speed boosting is really not broken anymore it's not broken at all but it's a lot of builds that can actually get Hall of Fame quick for step. Like my 6'9", it only gets gold. 6 foot 8 and under are the only ones that can get it. So that's a thing. But I'm going to be honest with you. You really, 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 really want to make sure that you always have quick for step on at all times. Because even if the adrenaline boosts are in the game, you want to be as fast as possible. Because being as fast as possible is going to make it a lot easier for you to get open. It's just that simple. Whether you're using screens, whether you're ISO, it's just a fact. Rebound Chaser for Biz, we all know this is the best badge to get rebounds, so that's going to be a top tier badge. Rise Up for Bigs is pretty much posterizer for Bigs. It's not only posterizer, but it helps you do more standing dunks at a way higher frequency. Last year, it only did the standing dunks and it was very broken. They added now posterizer for standing dunks. So yeah, it's definitely top tier. Now this one could be broken, could be needed a nerf, because I've seen a lot of people doing standing dunks at a really, really high rate with not even a 70 standing dunk this year. And it's pretty tough for these bigs to actually block these standing dunks this year. So I could see people saying it's broken, but I'm gonna just leave it at top tier this year. Slippery off ball, slippery off ball, dexing, all that stuff is really good in this game. The only thing I say about slippery off ball that really nerfed it, it would have been broken for sure, but it uses adrenaline boost. The fact that it uses adrenaline boost is crazy. So I can't say it's broken. I can't say it's top tier because a lot of people don't even really dex off the ball anymore. They really just spot up. But when people eventually catch on that like dexing, if they, if they start using this badge, I can see people saying it's top tier. But for right now, I'm going to just say it's usable. Slithery. Slithery is one of the better badges in the game this year. Um, it does what it's always done. Give you the best animations possible for every single situation. It helps you dunk more, all that type of stuff. But also now, it also includes fancy footwork. Where Acrobat includes fancy footwork to avoid... Slithery finisher allows you to do pretty much everything else that fancy footwork did but also it does even more stuff if you remember unstrippable from last year where you would get ripped on dunks if you wanted to do like hop step layups hop step dunks and stuff like that and not lose the ball you would have to have unstrippable like this year you just need slithery so yeah now the thing is for a lot of y'all boys slithery is gonna be at a tier three if you make my six bit six nine build that i'll be dropping very soon you get it as a tier one badge very overpowered you can use this as one of your 10 badge points to give to get the old post riser so yeah i'm gonna just go ahead and say that's top tier top tier top tier space creator it actually does a significant difference for shooting i don't know what's up with these shot creator badges that really help you help you do a lot of stuff but i'ma just i'ma just say space creator is i want to say top tier but a lot of people don't even play use this play style so i'm gonna go usable if people use this play style this year they're really gonna more go for like fade so i'm gonna just say it's usable the only reason i included agent threes up there because everybody's fading everybody's fading but spin jumpers are also in there too and the ai spin jumper is really good too this year special delivery in my career top tier but if we just talking about regular, it's gonna help you hit shots when you do flashy passes. 
Um, the lob success is gonna make a big difference, but I still would just say it's usable. It's only select few, like the pure playmakers of the world, that's really gonna be using that for real. Limitless takeoff again, another very, very, very good badge this year. It's gonna be getting more content dunks. It's gonna be dunked from even further out. You put this alongside like a slithery. You put this alongside like a like you put this alongside like a lot of badges. Very, very broken. The thing that makes this badge really overpowered for my build is a tier two badge. So it costs six badges to get it to Hall of Fame, and I can use it towards getting a tier three badge. So I can go use six on Limitless Takeoff, four on Slithery, and that's 10. That's my 10. That's my first 10 to just use a tier three badge. So yeah, in my opinion, it's a tier, it's a, it's a top tier badge. It's a top tier badge. But I can see people saying this and this are not enough badge points, but they're a top tier badges. I'm sorry. Unpluckable. Unpluckable. My opinion is a need badge for sure. You need that badge. I know a lot of people be like, I have an unpluckable and I still get, bro, I have a Hall of Fame unpluckable. You just, a lot of people, I'm gonna be honest, when it kind of anchor, a lot of people saying like the shot contestant paint, you just made a bad build, bro. You made a bad build. I've seen a lot of people saying, Chase Down, you made a bad build. I'm sorry, bro. I, I, I hate to break it to you, but it, it happens. It happens. Not to me, but it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. But unpluckable. Um, you do need a 95 ball handle to get that joint to Hall of Fame. I see a lot of guards going 94, one off of 95, getting that gold handles for days. But I'm telling you, you go want that Hall of Fame unpluckable. It is a significant difference from gold and Hall of Fame. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And a lot of these badges that's on here, if you get these badges to Hall of Fame in comparison to gold, it's a significant difference, just like gold to silver, just like silver to bronze. 2K did a really good job balancing these badges tier to tier. I'm just saying that. And I was saying that before the game come out. If they're going to make these badges cost this much to get, they got to actually make these badges worthwhile getting to this tier. It's just that simple. And 2K did a pretty decent job with a lot of these badges. Vice grip for bigs, in my opinion, is the need. Um, when you're coming down for that rebound, you don't want to get ripped. Very important. Even if you're a guard for certain situations, like you catching the ball off the catch, you know some people going to be doing that stuff from last year where they just spam an X. So when you catch the ball, you don't want to lose the ball off your catch. Vice grip is going to be needed. So, yeah, I would say vice grip is a need. It's a need badge. Kind of like how glue hands was, but it's not glue hands. It doesn't, like, make you do better catch animations or anything like that. I don't believe. If that's if that does that, then it should be top tier. But I don't believe it does that. Volume shoot is one of these badges that actually helps you shoot. I would say it's a top tier badge. The only thing I say that could make it not top tier, in my opinion, is the fact that it's really only guards that's going to really be able to use this. Maybe stretches, too. People that shoot the majority of the shots. So if you're shooting a lot of shots on your build, volume shooter on, it's going to make a significant difference. But if you're not, just keep it at usable. I would just keep it at usable because it's only a build specific. But for the guards of Pro and stuff like that, they're going to need it. For the guards of Rec, you're going to like it. You know, guards of Park even, you're going to like it. I'm telling you, if you're taking like seven threes a game, you're going to really, really like volume shooters. Facts. Workhorse. Um, in my opinion, it's really good again this year. It's just not like of the utmost importance because in my opinion, the dives this year are really good this year. They're really good. You don't really need workhorse anymore. You don't even have to call a timeout every single time if you're playing 5v5 whenever somebody dies because they can dive and actually pass it in a good direction. It's going to give you a good pass. You can dive and save the ball from out of bounds without having workhorse and it's going to be really good. Now, if you do throw this on, it's going to give you way better animations from doing so. But I don't think it's like a, a badge that like makes a significant difference without having it on to putting it on that you have to waste badge points on putting it on. Now, a lot of builds are going to be able to have it as a tier one. So if you do want to use these badges to be able to get to your tier three, do so. But I'm going to just throw it in usable. But yeah, that is going to be the end of this video. That's going to be my badge tier list for NBA 2K23 Season 1. We This can be subject to change. I probably will eventually do a tier list for finishing, shooting, playmaking, and defensive eventually. If you guys do want that, like the video. But yeah, that's going to be the video for today. If you guys want more videos like this, smash break and start the like button, turn on notifications, share the video to anybody that can help. I do plan on also dropping you guys the best dunk animations in the game right now, today. I do plan on also give you guys the best dribble animations later on this week. Like I said, 99 overall method, best animations for 6 foot 5 to 6 9, best animations for 6 10 and up. I got a lot of stuff in store for y'all boys. So if you guys do want those videos, go right down, like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this video to anybody that will help. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz, and I do, man. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah!